And welcome back on Laughing Museums. Uh, my name is Cedric and I just came from Nice today because, well, wait for it. Welcome back on Laughing Museums um, and I just came this time because I wanted to talk about only one thing which is something that is not so known on um, the ceramics. Um, what is interesting with the ceramics is the shape of it mostly, so I'm going to put some example right there so you can have an idea of uh, why the ceramics look like that. And it don't me for two reasons. Number one, I saw one that went for 70,000 euros, right? Uh, I never had a bit of traction for it and the whole goal of artistry when it gets to someone like Picasso who covered so many ground in what was called uh, modern art or even avant-garde from the early of the uh, 20th century. I'd like to remind you, he arrived in Paris around 1900, 1921. He arrived with the uh, Musée d'Orsay, which is now Musée d'Orsay. It was a train station. So the first view of Picasso, I'm always thinking about that, was on the Louvre. Imagine the, the challenge for this guy. I think he said something one day. My goal is to fill the entire museum with, um, with painting or even to fill the Louvre with painting, stuff like that. Anyhow, my point is, and the truth is you fill many museums all over the planet <laughs> nowadays, right? So today we're talking about the ceramics which are in Valoris and I had the luck to uh, did uh, an intervention in Valoris to explain artistry, promoting my last uh, book, um, which is still in French, but I'm working on a translation. And I was just telling you, I saw one uh, uh, online going for $70,000, let's put it this way. But I went to draw one day and it appeared that in one of the sales that I saw, I saw one going for like 15, 20, maybe 50 euros, right? So one Picasso plate, right? And as I was looking into it, I was really looking at the shapes of this plate and why, why on earth are this plate shaped like that, right? And those plates are shaped mostly this way for one and only one main reason. It is because those plates are, um, how can I put that? Oh yeah, they correspond to what they call in Spanish, and sorry for my Spanish, uh, la fuente. And la fuente is really a way to put the plate on the table and to share it with, um, with everyone. And that's really a way to have uh, uh, Spanish people do that. Like I remember when I was uh, going through Spain, through Biarritz, there was this little uh, bar that I like and they serve fantastic Spanish food. You don't even know if you're in France or in Spain, you don't care much, right? And the cider place, they have this big cider right there. And the cider, the refill is free, but you have to wait for the boss to stand up, go in the back and there's this massive cider and you go with like a hammer and the, the cider is pissing this way and you put your drink and drink. Uh, a fantastic way to actually test a uh, Spanish cider, which is absolutely delicious. Uh, anyway, so that was La Fuente and the way of ceramic that he did a lot of uh, in, 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 um, in Valoris. And some of his ceramic really, really uh, interested me. I'm going to put a few examples, the one I like and the one I like a little bit, uh, a little bit less, right? So that was it. That was me live straight from the Picasso Museum, which you can see right now with a beautiful view on the coast, but also a beautiful view on that space which is absolutely unique uh, like usual with Riviera it was supposed to rain but it's not right don't forget no matter what you do if you're not doing it as well well you might be doing it wrong you guys take care <laughs>